One of my, my most recent breakthroughs was uh, one of your lessons on contrapositives. Um, I think that uh, getting through that, um, just learning about uh, how contrapositives work, I think that that was a huge breakthrough for logic games. Awesome. That's really fantastic to hear. I'm glad the material has been helpful to you. Contrapositives, of course, incredibly important topic, cuts across both logic games and logical reasoning pretty deeply. So I'm glad to hear that. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on for you these days and how I can help you out going forward, either a challenge you're facing or a new area you'd like to unlock. Yeah, I would say uh, one of my biggest challenges is not knowing a lot of people that are doing the LSAT and not knowing a lot of people um, that are you know, applying to law school. So there's a lot of questions I have. Um, if it's okay, I'll just start with a few questions I have for you. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Shoot. So I am a, a teacher. I'm an eighth grade teacher. Um, this is my final year of teaching. I love teaching. Absolutely love teaching. I'm also in the Army Reserve. Um, I've really enjoyed that experience. Got to go on a deployment as well. Um, and I'm wondering, for my resume, just should I just include those professional uh, um, obligations that I've had of teaching? and my uh, job in the military, is there anything else that I include on that? What else, what else seems relevant? What else would you consider including? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like uh, as far as the resume, I would think the highlights would basically be since I graduated college in 2015, I have been a teacher um, the whole time as opposed, or uh, with the exception of the times I've been gone in the military. So it's really just been those two things. I've been in the military and I've been teaching and I haven't done, I haven't, you know, I had any other job in retail or anything like that. Just those two things. That's fine. I mean, that's plenty. You could also consider any, anything from during your time in college. And so any extracurriculars during college, any volunteer work during college, you can also, if you, I mean, res, resumes should typically be one page. So if you have some empty space where you want to include more, you could also include hobbies and interests, a section there or any honors and awards if you want to include, or you can, of course, make use of any additional lines that you have by including another bullet point under a relevant, under the teaching or under the Army Reserves or under your undergraduate experience. Okay, uh, should I uh, include, uh, I've also been a, uh, a coach for baseball, football, and wrestling. Should I include those things or are those irrelevant? No, they're not irrelevant at all. I would definitely include them if you have the space. They demonstrate leadership. They demonstrate that you understand the principles about teamwork, things like that. And you keep teaching and coaching though, that is a, common theme across both, right? So I would definitely include it if you have the space. And for the personal statement, um, I just actually was just right before you got on, I was reading through um, the last email you just sent about the personal statement. And uh, I'm thinking about uh, going the military route for that, um, just focusing on my experience in the military. Anything in specific, should I focus on the deployment specifically? Should I focus on um, an actual week or day in, in deployment? Or would you say, don't go that route at all? What's your kind of advice on that? There's not really a right answer on this that I could tell you without knowing all the, all the details of your entire Army Reserves experience, which of course I can't know. But I would go with whatever you think is going to be most compelling for them. So that could be during deployment or that could be in any, any, I guess, training. I'm not too familiar with the army reserves, but anything that you've done prior to deployment or after any experiences that you had throughout the entire, throughout the entire uh, time in the reserves that you think would be most compelling for an admission officer. So stories are always good, especially for a specific hook at the beginning including details, but think about what you really want to communicate in your personal statement, what qualities you want to show, and then dem you demonstrate them through the story that you tell. 
Is there any okay. particular example that comes to mind? Um, I just think uh, there were uh, obviously very tense times on uh, on deployment, and I think uh, maybe demonstrating my ability to handle large amounts of stress. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, you know, basically to uh, perform under pressure, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely something that I could see being easy to easy to communicate through that. I would talk also talk about growth, you know, show some vulnerability in it. And you can it doesn't have to be successes necessarily. You can also talk about failures and lessons learned from there. All right, perfect. Um for uh I, I now this is a question for the writing sample. Um so on test day, I take the LSAT, I take uh, one reading comprehension, one logic game sections, two um, logical reasoning sections. Is that correct? And then is there one more? Great question. So the LSAT has changed formats over the years. The current format is only one scored section of each of logic games, logical reasoning, and reading comprehension. And then a fourth unscored experimental section. So okay. when you say two logical reasonings, I understand why. It's because all the previously published LSATs from exam one up to exam 89 have the two LRs because the LSAT used to have two scored logical reasoning sections. But when they moved it online, the format changed. Long story short, you're now only going to have one scored logical reasoning. And then the unscored fourth experimental section could be any of games, reasoning, or reading comp. Okay. And you don't know which one is the experimental, obviously. That's right. It could be any okay. type of section, and it could appear anywhere in the order of sections. It could be first, second, third, or fourth. The only thing you do know is whatever I get two sections of, one of those is experimental. Yes. Later, you'll okay. know it was one of those two, but you won't know which one. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then the writing sample, is that after those four sections are complete? It's not in the same sitting. So okay. you can do it actually up to eight days prior to the LSAT. You can also do it afterwards. I would make sure that you do it no later than a few days after the LSAT because you don't want the writing sample to delay your score release. They won't release your score until you have at least one writing sample on file. Okay, and is that something where uh, Proctor is watching me? I have a time. It is um, timed. It, it is timed. It is the, for security, the, cam the webcam is recording you. There's okay. not someone watching you live, but they can review the footage later in case of any, let's say someone interrupted you in the room during the exam that would raise a flag of some kind. So you want to make sure you're not going to be interrupted and that you don't have any prohibited items in the, in the room. Okay. Um, and is that something where it's like one page, two pages? Is it three paragraphs? What's the length on that? I don't believe there's a set length that it has okay. to be. I would definitely go with at least three paragraphs, probably four. I wouldn't, you don't want it to be too short. So I, I would go on, when in doubt, go a little bit longer just to show that you have more to say. Kind of like if your resume were only half a page, that would kind of raise the question, well, well, where is everything else? What do you have? So the writing sample, you also want to show that you have something to say, that you can make a well-reasoned argument it could be intro, body, body, conclusion, and just clearly state the option that you're choosing and why, and make sure that you're acknowledging the downsides of your choice while still arguing overall in your choice's favor. So be reasonable, but clearly come down on one side or the other. Okay, perfect. Um, and then for the actual LSAT, um, the other day, I'm doing a untimed section. I'm doing practice test. I believe it was 53. And uh, it was logic games. And I got 23 out of 23. And it took me 
uh, 66 minutes. Um, is that something? Uh, so it took me probably about 13 minutes for the first one, 13 minutes for the second one, um, and then probably 20 minutes for third, 20 minutes for fourth. Um, is that something where you think, um, are you encouraged by that? Or do you think, well, anybody could do it in 20 minutes? I just didn't know how to take that. Or anybody could get the correct, because if you really look at a logic game long enough, you will get the answer correct. Well, to be honest, some people won't get it correct, even with all the time in the world. The time constraint is huge. So it makes sense that you would do better if you have more time or if you allow more time. But there also is something to learn. There is, you know, there, there's inferences to make. There's the rules to understand. There's game types to understand. So the fact that you're getting them all correct with almost double the time that's actually allotted, that's a good sign. Now we just have to help you get more efficient and cut down the time bit by bit. So I am encouraged by the fact that you got them all correct because not everybody does. So that means that you have learned something for sure. Like you said at the beginning, you know, contrapositive, that matters, that helps. So I would just aim to shave off time bit by bit. You could go from 66 to cut it down to 60 then give yourself 55 and reduce gradually five or so minutes at a time. And I would also see how can you get the easier games more quickly? And then also how can you get the harder games more quickly? So this comes down, down to things like making more inferences up front, maximizing your use of previous work. Are you there still, Steve? I, you cut out just at the end. I just want to make sure you're still there. Yeah, I'm still there. I know the internet has been a little bit shaky. Uh, right. Let me know if you want me to repeat anything. Nope. That's good. Um, is there, when you did really well on your last um, LSAT, is there like a time you gave yourself for logic games? You've written down all the rules. You're looking at your inferences. Is there a time where you said, at, at, um, at two minutes, as soon as, as soon as two minutes is hit, I've, I, I don't even know how to, if I'm saying this right. I'm just saying, is there an allotted time you gave yourself to make inferences and then decided, okay, I can't make any more. I'm moving on. Yeah, I guess I, under, I, I understand I the question. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah. So the question is kind of to put it another way is like, how much time should you allow for inferences yes. up front before jumping into the questions? Yeah, there's no one hard and fast answer on this. It's a question I get a lot. Some games lend themselves to tons of inferences up front. Others have very few. And so it's something you kind of have to feel out. My rule of thumb would be if you see a path to making more inferences or multiple main diagrams, and you can do so methodically and systematically, play it out. Go as far as you can with it. And once you reach a natural stopping point where you feel like you can't really go any further, then leave it there, jump into the questions, the orientation question will typically serve as a kind of warm up and help you get a sense of how the game should work or what a valid scenario should look like. But it'll vary from game to game, and not all games will lend themselves to tons of inferences. Not all of them will lend themselves to multiple main diagrams. It's going to vary. And as you do more and more games, you'll get a better sense of where to go with it. All right. That sounds good. I just have. One last thing, and this isn't really a question, just uh, I guess I'm just sharing a struggle I've had um, with logical reason and sometimes logic games too, but with logical reasoning, I would say I miss a lot of questions more than I should by not reading carefully. Um, I would say there's, there's some that will say the question, logical regional question will say, uh, all of these answers will strengthen or, or which of these answers, all of these answers will strengthen the argument except, and I read it quick, I'm trying to go fast, trying to be efficient with my time, and I read which one will strengthen. And so now, if you're looking at a which one will strengthen except, now I'm looking at four answers that do strengthen, and it's taken, it's like, well, that will strengthen, that will strengthen, and I'm just looking for one, when I should be looking for one that will not strengthen it. So that's just a, a struggle I've been having. I just need to, I guess, have a little bit more attention to detail. 
Yeah, that comes with that comes with practice. It comes with getting burned enough times. And you could even, if you want, on your scratch paper, write S, 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 S for strengthen, S for strengthen, so that you can solidify for yourself, okay, well, the default is that answer choices are going to strengthen. If it doesn't, it will either weaken or have no effect. In most cases, the answer will have no effect. And so just to help yourself really emphasize the nature of what it is that you're supposed to do. But yeah, forgetting halfway through is really common and it just takes more exposure and more practice. You could also drill accept questions specifically to get a sense of the rhythm of how those work. That sounds great. I will do that. Um, that's really all I have. Awesome, Brett. Well, it's great to meet you. If you have any questions or need anything going forward, just shoot me an email and reach out. I'm happy to help. That sounds great. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Have a good one. All right. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.